Three, two, one. Full power. And lift off. There need to be things that excite and inspire people. Yeah. You have to be, you know, reasons why you get up in the morning. It can't just be solving problems. It's got to be, yeah, something, something great is going to happen in the future. Well, first of all, I'd say I actually feel fear quite strongly. Um, so it's not as though I just have the absence of fear. I, I feel it quite strongly. Um, but there, there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough, that you, you do it in spite of fear. There's always a chance of failure. So. I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Uh, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. And, and, and also, if, if, you, if you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you're, it'll just, it, it's, it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and, and if you don't like it, you, you just really can't make it work, I think. When you're building something new, there's going to be mistakes. Yeah. Um, and it's important to, to recognize those mistakes, acknowledge them, and take corrective action. Yeah. Um, and the success of a company is very much more about how quick are you to fix the mistakes, mm. not will you make mistakes. And if you see the difference between a startup that is successful and one that is not, and it's because the successful one, they both made mistakes, but the successful one recognized the mistakes, fixed them very quickly, and the, the unsuccessful one tries to deny that the mistakes exist. You know, a lot of life in general, in any job, there's like you have to do your chores. I think to be successful at almost anything, you can't, it, you have to do the tough stuff and as well as the enjoyable stuff. You have to do the boring stuff as well as the non-boring stuff. Um, and if you don't do your chores, then bad things will happen. But if they don't do the things that they don't like to do, then the company will be in trouble. Like you have to, you, you basically, like it's more fun to cook the meal than to, 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 to clean the dishes, mm -hmm. okay? But you need to clean the dishes. <laughs> you need to do both. Yes, you need to do both, exactly. Now is the time to take risk. You don't have kids. As you get older, your obligations increase. And once you have a family, you start taking risk not just for yourself, but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time t to do that. Uh, before you before you have those obligations. So I would, I would encourage you to take risks now, do something bold. Um, you won't regret it. When starting SpaceX, I thought the odds of success were less than 10%. Um, yeah, same with Tesla. I thought you know, the odds of a car company succeeding were extremely low. And I just accepted that actually probably I would just lose, lose everything. Um, but that maybe we would make some progress. If we could just move the ball forward, even if we died, maybe some other company could pick up the baton and move and keep moving it forward. I, first of all, I really need to give some thought to like, how can I provide advice that would be most helpful? And I'm not sure I've given enough thought to, to, to that, to give you the best possible answer. But I think, um, I think certainly uh, being focused on something that you're confident will have high value to someone else um, and just being really rigorous in making that assessment. A natural human tendency is wishful thinking. Um, mm -hmm. So a, a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit. And it's, it's, that, is a, it, that is a really difficult thing to, to tell you. Can you tell the difference between those two things? Right. You know? So you need to be sort of very rigorous um, in, in your self-analysis. Uh, self I think certainly extremely tenacious uh, and, um, and then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in you know, 80 hour, 100 hour weeks every week. That, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. Okay. Um, right. I mean, if, 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 if other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that you, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. The, I think one of the biggest mistakes people generally make, and I'm guilty of it too, is wishful thinking. You know, like you want something to be true, even if it isn't true. Um, and so you ignore the things that, uh, you, you ignore the real truth because of what you want to be true. 
this is a very difficult trap to avoid. Um, and like I said, certainly one that I uh, find myself in having problems with. But if you just take that approach of you're always to some degree wrong and your goal is to be less wrong and, and solicit critical feedback, particularly from friends. Like friends, particularly friends, if somebody loves you, they want the best for you. They don't want to tell you the bad things. Um, so you have to ask them, you know, and say, really, I, I really do want to know. <laughs> and, and then they'll tell you. And the way I tend to view problems is, is from, a, from a physics standpoint. I, mean, I, think, I think physics is a good analytical framework. Um, and uh, one of the key things in, in, in physics is to reason from first principles. Um, this is contrary to the way most human reasoning takes place, which is by analogy. Um, reasoning from first principles just means that you, you figure out what, what are the fundamental what, what are the fundamental truths or, or things that are pretty sh people are pretty sure are fundamental truths, and and can you build up to a conclusion from from that uh, or, you know from, from those principles, and, um, uh, and and then certainly if you come up with some idea and it appears to violate one of those fundamental truths, then you're probably wrong. Um, or you should get a really big prize or something like that. Um, so uh, this may seem like, I don't know, it may, be, may seem sort of obvious when it's explained, but it's actually not what people do. Reasoning by analogies is helpful because it's a shortcut. Yeah. Um, and, and, it's, and it's mostly correct, but, but uh, it tends to be most incorrect when you're dealing with new things because it's hard to analogize to something really new. When you were in college and developing these skills, you wanted to do some things that were of benefit to humanity. Why, yeah. why did you think that? Well, because uh, not everyone does. Yeah, no, uh, I, I guess it was, uh, I, I had sort of an existential crisis uh, of like, what does it all mean and what's the meaning, you know, what's the meaning of life and it probably goes back to, to high school, I guess. Uh, um, I don't want to give a laboriously long answer, but uh, I was, uh, I, I had sort of a dark childhood. It wasn't good. <laughs> um, probably partially brought on by, by, by reading some of the philosophers like, D -d don't ever read Schopenhauer and Nietzsche if you're 14. It's, <laughs> it's not good. Um, I was just trying to find, figure out what, you know, what does it all mean. And um, when I read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which I think is a great work of philosophy, um, th th that sort of highlighted the point that very often the, the issue is understanding what questions to ask. And if you can properly frame the question, then the answer is the easy part. Um, so I thought uh, things that uh, expand the scope and scale of human consciousness um, and allow us to better ask questions and, you know, and, and, and achieve greater enlightenment, those are good things. And so that's sort of what, what, what can we do that's going to um, most likely lead to that outcome?